All right, today we're going to be talking about an article that I read on Medscape regarding a new study that links thrombocytosis with an increased risk of cancer, specifically lung and colorectal cancer. Now, before we get into the topic today, before we get into the discussion, I just want to make sure or I want to do a quick announcement um, regarding the board review course and the pharmacology review course. Now, if any of you are interested in doing a free trial, you can do so on the website. That's learn.physicianassistantboards.com. I recently added that feature for those of you who are interested in the board review or the farm review, but wanted to give it a try first. So that feature is now available. If you haven't already done so, again, that's learn.physicianassistantboards.com. You can sign up for free. You can do a couple of free lectures. If you like it, then great. You can continue forward with the full course. If you don't like it, then I hope that the free lectures at least provided some type of value for you. So today we're going to get into a new study that was recently published on May 22nd. And I recently found this article on Medscape. And I'm going to put the link, uh, the link to both the Medscape article and the link to the study in the, uh, in the bio here in the profile for uh, YouTube and for those listening on the podcast as well. Now, the article is regarding a cohort study that was titled Clinical Relevance of Thrombocytosis in Primary Care. And this was published in the British Journal of General Practice. Now, this was interesting because it linked thrombocytosis, specifically those patients with no other symptoms, as having an increased risk. And what they say is that 11% of men and 6% of women with thrombocytosis were diagnosed with cancer the following year. They also state that one third of patients who went on to be diagnosed with uh, colorectal cancer had no other symptoms that would have prompted an urgent referral for cancer. Now, Dr. Saya Bailey, who's one of the authors here, states that people could have their cancer diagnosed up to three months earlier if thrombocytosis had prompted investigation for cancer. And the way the study was done, right, they extracted 40,000 patients that were aged at least 40 years old who had a platelet count greater than 400. Now, after all the exclusions, about 31,260 individuals with thrombocytosis were included. The median age here was 67.9, 69.8% were female. And within one year of being identified as having this thrombocytosis, 11.6% of men and 6.2% of women were diagnosed with cancer. This compared to a one-year cancer incidence among individuals with a normal count, a normal platelet count of 4.1% in men and 2.2% in women. Now, in the second year after thrombocytosis, that incidence actually returned back to normal, right? So we had baseline levels. The caveat here that if a second platelet count within six months of the first showed an increased or stable platelet count, the one-year incidence of cancer was 18.1% in men and 10.1% in women. Now, when we're talking about cancer, the most commonly diagnosed cancer here in the thrombocytosis group were going to be lung and colon cancer, so colorectal cancer and lung cancer. Now, of the patients that were diagnosed with lung cancer, 35.7% of those had no symptoms that would have prompted any type of urgent investigation. And in the colon cancer, colorectal cancer group, 32.9% of those patients had no other urgent symptoms other than the thrombocytosis. So what this study here is stating is that thrombocytosis alone, although it's not considered a risk factor, but thrombocytosis, a platelet count of over 400, could be the only clue to lung cancer, could be the only clue to colorectal cancer in those patients who are otherwise asymptomatic. And what they're trying to investigate is why these patients, now there's a couple of theories that were thrown out on the article, none of which seem concrete by any means. Um, again, this is one study looking at this. This doesn't mean that everybody who has an increased platelet count of 400 should undergo colonoscopy. This doesn't mean that anybody with an increased platelet count should undergo CT. Um, but this is one study. It's interesting. It's something to keep an eye out. It's a data point, right? So take it with for what it's worth. But I found this very, very fascinating. If you have any opinion, I'd like to know actually your opinion. Are you using platelet count um, as an indicator in those patients that are asymptomatic? Are you seeing that these patients have an increased risk of cancer? For those of you working in oncology, do you have any type of viewpoint? Be very, very interested to know. If you guys like this, please hit the like button. This really, really helps. Subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. This way you guys don't miss any episodes here. 
And again, like I said, I made an announcement. If you guys are interested in doing the board review, the farm review, you can do so. Get a free trial. I'll put the link in the uh, in the description here. That's learn.positionassistantboards.com. And I also linked the article. I'll also link the Medscape article. So the article, I should say, for Medscape, and I'll link the uh, actual study itself. That way you guys can dive in a little bit deeper. Hopefully this was interesting for you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next video and or podcast, however it is you're listening or watching. Take care. Bye.